from Orlando, Florida. It's week three of the NWSL on CBS Sports. Tonight's matchup between Orlando and Gotham brings out all the stars. Number 23, Messiah Bright. The rookie scored her first pro goal in week two. Number nine, Adriana. The Brazilian international just back after playing on Wednesday. And there's number 10, Lynn Williams. Week one, player of the week. And number five, everybody knows Kelly O'Hara. Championships follow that woman. Stay with us. Orlando versus Gotham, right here. Ally is proud to present the NWSL on CBS Sports. Tonight, from Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida, the Orlando Pride hosts Gotham FC. Tonight's game is brought to you by CarMax. Alongside former Manchester United goalkeeper Gary Bailey, I am Jamie Watson. Gary, the future is bright in Orlando with Messiah Bright. What makes Messiah so special? Oh, this is a wonderful player, the power. Have a look at this goal, the power to get between those two center backs, the pace to beat them, and then she lifts her head, sees the goalkeeper, slips her past her, and hits the back of the net. At 23 years of age, she has an incredible future ahead, and if they can get ball to her, if they give her opportunity, she will score goals for Lando Pride for a long time to come. And for Gotham, it's number 10. Lynn Williams, third all-time NWSL goal scorer with 58. Gary, tell us about Lynn Williams. I think this goal tells you about her against Angel City. No need to control it. Hit it first time, back of the net, great finish. Goalkeeper's not even close to that. You know, she scored 15 and 52 for the USA, 45 and 96 for the Courage. That's one every two matches. And guess what? She's got one in two for Gotham already. We'll be back with this Ally NWSL matchup between the Orlando Pride and Gotham FC right here on CBS Sports. And welcome back to Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida. We're about to get set for our kick. 
off for this first 45 as we take a look at Gotham. Kelly O'Hara and Mandy Freeman there. Our goalkeeper ID right now, Abby Smith, starting a goal for Gotham. She got a huge win at Angel City. Gary, let's take a look at our lineups for Gotham. Yep, for uh, Gotham, three changes, and great to see if you're on Amanu up front. Mitch Purse surprisingly on the bench, but on Amanu and Lynn Williams will make a wonderful uh, front pair. Victoria Pickett comes in as well, as does Jenna Nyswanger, who we assume will start it right back. Again, we'll have to see how that lines up. Victoria Pickett, Yasmin Ryan, not quite sure which one's going to be wide left and left midfield, but more or less that's how it could line up. Uh, three changes from the side that played last, so interesting to see the changes they've made. And for Orlando, it's number 24, Kelly Collins, number 34 overall in the 2021 NWSL Draft. Gary, what can you tell us about the Orlando lineup? Well, exactly what you said there. The goalkeeper, Anna Morehouse, out and not even on the bench. So Kaylee Collins with a great chance to stake her claim for that position. So excited to see Messiah Bright. We assume she'll play as the main striker with Adriana on the right. They might switch as time goes on. And Marta is back. So great to see her. Uh, Ali Watt is out. Julie Dole picked up an injury in the last match. So three changes for Orlando Pride from their last match as well. And our match referee is Elvis Osmanovich. Elvis is in the building, Gary. We are about ready to <laughs> kick it off here with, that looks like Messiah Bright over the ball. Orlando is in purple. And that's Haley McCutcheon. And Gotham will be in the white tops and the white shorts. So great to see number 10 back, Gary. Marta, closest to our screen, and we are underway here in Orlando, Florida. They're gonna get a touch right to Kaylee Collins immediately as she distributes out to the right. There's Ify Anamanu Mewis. Pick it. Orlando was worried, Gary, about a quick transition. It looks like here it is. Out on the left flank, in the box. Well, Gotham. You would, Gotham. You, would, you would think early on the one thing you're going to want to do is test Kaylee Collins in that goal, and that's probably what Gotham have in mind. Get on the front foot, try and get a shot, test out. Collins, who's only in her second ever appearance for the Orlando Pride. Ball over the end line, that will be a goal kick. That back four certainly will be tested. Gotham comes in. Their lineup, Gary, is strong. 230 career goals for this Gotham side. Yeah, so many experienced players, powerful players, players who have played at international level and know how to win games if you're looking at Kelly O'Hara just representing the USA midweek Christy Mewis, Ali Long, uh, Ify Onamanu, international players Lynn Williams so they know how to get results. Seb Hines there in picture he's got a young squad and it's going to be difficult they've lost their opening two matches they got hammered by Portland Thorns away much much better uh, in their second match at home to Angel City but still losing so a lot of work for this Orlando Pride to do. Kelly O'Hara over the ball. She will serve. O'Hara into the box, cleared out by Strom for the pride. There's Mewis getting a service in. Anumanu on the ball. Messiah Bright coming all the way back to help out. Marta spreading things wide, plays it back. They're going to have to matriculate out of the defensive third, aren't they, Gary? Yeah, look at that pressure. Look at the white shirts everywhere. Trying to get turnover ball. And now Gotham come back. But that's going to be a feature, I would think, of the Gotham side. High press in big numbers. And there's Adriana. A real bright spot, bright spark for Orlando on that right side. She is a bright spark, but she needs to find Messiah Bright. <laughs> and that's uh, going to be her aim on that right-hand side, Adriana. Very quick, very skillful. She'll attack 
which has got to whip a ball in and try and give the 23-year-old Messiah Bright something to work with. 10 crosses in two games for Adriana. She's creating the opportunities, Gary. They just need to actually execute and finish, don't they? They do, they need to get the ball out. Look at this pressure again, a turnover ball. Oh, here comes Lynn Williams on a dribble run. Lynn Williams with the shot. And Kelly Collins makes the easy save. Lynn Williams did not play during the international week, those two games, so, you know, she is just getting right back into it here with a shot on goal. Well, I expect more from Lynn Williams. She did so well to win the turnover ball. Give her credit there, firstly, and that's this pressure that Gotham are applying to Orlando Pride, but a better finish, surely. Mewis plays that ball in, and Lynn Williams heads that ball to Kaylee Collins, who picks it up for Orlando. You have to expect Lynn Williams is such a wonderful, wonderful player that having done the hard work of getting turnover ball, look at his white shirt, hunting, closing down. There's the mistake coming from Cosme. Now she's through one on one. They put my house on her to hit it better than that, but just sort of scuffed it. And it happens even to the great players. And no doubt relief for Kaylee Collins in goal there for Orlando Pride. Well, she's getting tested early, isn't she, the Orlando goalkeeper? And right back is Yasmeen Ryan on that left flank. Here comes Marta. She's back. Number 10, the legend. She played a complicated ball there. Messiah Bright had made a run down that left flank and you would have thought with her pace and strength that would have been the simple ball. Marta trying the complicated cross field pass and it gets cut up. But I think you're right about Marta. She, she's the one who's got the, the knowledge, the skill, the experience to really push this team from midfield. And here comes Adriana. She's quicker than most think. Adriana tries to get that shot off, looking for a PK. And there's a shot and a save by Abby Smith. There's Carrie Abello with the shot. Good chance there for Orlando Pride. Decent effort from Abello. Not, not hard enough to really cause Abby Smith too many problems, but Orlando Pride creating a few issues of their own there, and in particular, Adriana just around the edge of the box, threatening, and here they come again. Good turn by Messiah Bright. Such a strong physical presence. Number 23, here's Marta. So comfortable over the ball, as you said, Gary. Marta, back to Strom. Strom is in. There's a service right to Abby Smith, the goalkeeper. It's a pity from Strom there because Erica Timrak had made a run. She was about 10 yards out. She could have pulled it back to her instead. Puts it straight in the goalkeeper's very grateful arms. But Seb Hines has got to be happy with the response after a little bit of early pressure. And when we chatted to him a couple of days ago, he said, when we play at home, we have to try and win. We will keep going. And now, yes, we got caught in the dying seconds against uh, Angel City. They scored in the, what is it, 90 or 99th minute, thereabouts. But he said, we, for our fans, we will always try to win at home. And that seems to be the attitude right now. Absolutely. Seb Hines, the youngest coach to go along at 34 years of age, to go along with a very young Orlando Pride squad. Abby Smith working the ball out of the back, somewhat dangerously, Freeman. Mandy Freeman looking for some help. Our first look at Ify Anamanu has not played the first two games. But a player that you like, Gary. Yeah, we're just looking at her last season, her and Mitch Perch, just a wonderful combination up front. Now you chuck Lynn Williams in there. I'd love to see all three playing together. I'm not sure why Mitch Perch is on the bench today. Maybe it's just a rest because of international travel and involvement. But one day those three will play together and then I think Gotham will have a most awesome front three. Yeah, Lynn Williams as Orlando is making a run here outside the box. It's a bellow. She plays it out wide to Marta. Samba footing it, Abello, not afraid to shoot. Here's Clough. Oh, it's very, very tight with that Gotham defense as Mewis plays it back. Gotham will work it out. 
Well, Gotham have come back well, and I go back to that Will and then, then Williams chance a few minutes back. You, know, you get through one on one with the goalkeeper. You're one of the best strikers the NWSL has ever seen. I'm thinking you've got to tuck that away, put your team one the lap, and put you in the driving seat. Adriana in the gold boots. Adriana with the service in the box. Well done to save a corner kick by the Gotham defender. And Carlos Amaros asking a few questions. And, uh, good coach, a lot of experience. A chance to chat to him a few days ago as well. And he thinks there's great things ahead for this Gotham side. Juan Carlos Amaros, 38 years old, just four years older than Seb Hines. Two young coaches doing great things. And <laughs> Ify Anamano takes the goat down. Marta. Yeah, she's a very, very powerful player up front, Ify Anamano. Certainly bigger than Marta and a little bit late on Marta there. Marta got injured in the Portland match two games ago. It came off after 53 minutes. We really hope that after her big injury last season that she can last the 90 minutes today. And a quick quick uh, reset by Adriana. Gets pushed out of bounds by Yasmin Ryan, number 18. It'll be a goal kick. Abby Smith with it. Abby Smith with a, a great chance to make this number one jersey, her own. Michelle Betos, of course, with a lot of experience, is on the bench again today. Got to see a little bit of a, a, a look at Lynn Williams' quickness. Kaylee Collins was able to come out and gather that ball. Kaylee McCutcheon getting a lot of minutes out in that back right side for Seb Hines in his second season as the Orlando head coach. Gary, we talked to him and he said, it's a new team, it's a new identity, it is new everything, it's going to take some time. It will do and the fans are gonna have to allow them that time because it is a younger side and, and they've struggled already in their opening two games. I was in the call for the match against Portland and they got played off the park in all fairness. They really struggled and when we chatted to Seb Hines, he said, yeah, it, you know, we try to play football, but in the end, we just weren't good enough. He said, but in the second match, we were a lot better in terms of playing against Angel City and, and how we created chances. And he said it was just such a blow to the gut to lose literally with the last kick of the match. Yeah, Katie Johnson scoring off a header in the 98th minute. I mean, it was a crushing blow, but I, I, Seb Hines said, we'll learn from it. And every team will experience that most likely. And there's Marta running back, just doing the little things, which makes her the GOAT. Mandy Freeman plays that ball back from Gotham. They're taking their time in this back four. Kristen Edmonds, we had a nice chat with her, didn't we? What a player. <laughs> lovely, lovely to chat to her. But she, she did make an interesting point. She said, uh, I don't think people rate us as a team. Obviously, it was a terrible season. Last season, it's a different team, especially with Lynn Williams joining. Kelly O'Hara plays that ball in just a tad long for Christy Mewis. Said it's a, a different team. People, people don't rate us as a team. And he said, but you'll be surprised. She said, but you'll be surprised what we're going to do this season. So I'm looking forward to seeing Gotham, and I really think they're going to certainly do a lot better than they did last year. That's for certain. Well, they were in last place last year and Kristen Edmonds said I don't think anybody's ever gone from last place to winning an NWSL <laughs> championship that's what's on Kristen Edmonds mind just a, a veteran 10 years 12 years of pro and just of course this is a sorry to interrupt this is against her former side she was uh, she was at the Lando Pride and when we asked her about it she said they're like a second family I know so many people there it's going to be emotional playing but she was super excited for the clash get another look at Juan Carlos Amoros. I spent some time in Europe. He was at uh, Tottenham Hotspur as a, a coach there. Also time in Spain at Real Betis. And 
last season took Dash to fourth position, which I thought was a very good achievement. Christy Mew is shot blocked. Gotham getting another shot up, but Orlando very sturdy in the back. Orlando crying for a handball. Do not get it. Elvis Osmanovich says no. And that he will call a foul. On Yasmin Ryan from Gotham. There's Erica Timrak. Let's have a look here. That's uh, the foul. Just not quite getting the ball first. It'll come into together a feet. No malice in it whatsoever. And uh, early on, this, this battle for domination taking place. It started with Gotham on the front foot. Orlando Pride came back. Now Gotham seems to have had the best of the last few minutes. And you do get the sense that with Christy Mewis, Ali Long, Victoria Pickett, Yasmin Ryan, that it's a very powerful midfield Gotham that can get control of this match. Uh, just a beautiful touch from Lynn Williams. Ify Anamanu is in. And she's going to cross, and it's blocked out by Cosme. The first quarter kick of the evening for Gotham. Cosme doing really well there, sticking with Onamanu. Only 24 years of age, Caitlin Cosme. Come up against a seasoned international such as Onamanu, who I thought had enough space to get the cross in, but in the end, good defending. Looks like Jenna Nye swung her to take this corner kick. For Gotham, Elvis Osmanovich clearing things out in front of the goal. And it's a service in. Nice swanger. Lynn Williams is on it. Ball's bouncing around. Yasmin Ryan trying to get in front of it. Cleared by Orlando Pride. Mandy Freeman drops it back into the box. Williams looking for Allie Long unsuccessfully. Cleared successfully by Orlando. And that is Emily Madrill, who Coach Seb Hines spoke very highly of. Just a, an ex-center back himself, Gary, Seb Hines said, she is such a terrific player. Played the only draftee to play all 180 minutes, Gary, in the first two games. Yeah, it's two young center backs in Madrill and Cosme. They're gonna come under pressure, as we saw there, the ball bouncing around in the box and some headers coming in. Nearly. <laughs> oh, that was saved by a toe by Nicewanger back there. Adriana was waiting with her gold boots. Adriana's going to cause problems for uh, opposing goalkeepers. And that's Abby Smith on it. For Orlando. Here comes Lynn Williams. Lynn Williams on a dribble run. Lynn Williams plays a beautiful ball out to the left. Allie Long, Allie Long, she will rocket a shot just over the crossbar. No stranger to scoring goals, is she, Gary? Allie Long is such a good player, such an experienced player. Still would like her to hit the target and test the goalkeeper. We have spoken about Kaylee Collins being untested at this level, so you would think she'd try and keep it low and even if you bounce it in front of the keeper, just give them a, a test. But just going back to the start of that move, Lynn Williams in midfield able to get the ball, turn, run at the defense. Got to be careful, Orlando Pride. You can't allow that to happen because if Lynn Williams gets on that front foot with options left and right, it's going to cause Pride a lot of problems. Yeah, Lynn Williams has had a very hot start to this season. She had the game winner against Angel City, Gary, in week one, which is why she was named week one player of the week. Week two was Sophia Smith with her hat trick. And the fans getting into the groove, love it. Getting some energy going there and supporting Seb Hines' young side, as you mentioned. A side that's going to have to grow this season, and fans will have to allow them the time and the odd mistake to grow. And they will get there, I'm sure, eventually. No question, they are committed to improving and I think he is a terrific head coach for this squad. Haley McCutcheon. Tremendous right back. Gets dumped to the ground by Yasmeen Ryan. 
Haley McCutcheon has something to say about that. And there's our match referee, Elvis Osmanovich. Yasmin Ryan coming in from, from Portland Thorns, where she did really well last season. Got three goals in 26 matches and USA U23 international. Oh, and there's Adriana. And here we're getting a good look at the speed of Adriana and Marta squeezing in just a little wide for Marta. And Marta will look to play that back to Strom. Wow, what a chance, Adriana. A decent ball to Marta, and surely she scores. Oh, we would have loved to have seen that. Marta serves it in with the left foot, and Adriana oh, heads it down just wide right. Fantastic move all around there by Orlando Pride. This cross coming in, Adriana at the far post and getting up. Doesn't quite hit target, so Abby Smith able to watch that wide. But just before that, though, we look at the header, knocked down. Abby Smith just scrambling across. But before that, Adriana with great turn of pace. I think Mandy Freeman dived in there, which you can't afford to do against Adriana. And she had all the time in the world, Marta free in the middle. It's just a simple square ball, and she overhits it. What it's, a chance. I feel like she was going so fast, Gary. Maybe she was going too fast to play the perfect ball to Marta. But Marta's been thinking about scoring, Gary. It's been a while. She was out all last year and was asked, have you thought about scoring that goal? And she goes, oh yeah, I've thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Almost happened there, didn't it, Gary? It did, it did, just that final pass. But you know what, Lynn Williams had one great chance for, for Gotham. Uh, Marta nearly got a chance there for Orlando Price. It's been a, a fairly even game so far. Oh, a terrific through ball. Uh, but Abby Smith plays it well. Tim Rack played that same seam ball to Messiah Bright and she scored, but not that time. A little too far for Adriana. I think at this stage, Juan Carlos Amoros is looking at Adriana and thinking we need to get a lot either tight or all get some cover on her, because when they get tight, she turns them, and when they don't get tight, she, she gets the ball and comes at them. Either way, there he is, thinking about it. He's gonna be a little bit concerned that she's caused absolute havoc down that right-hand side for Pride. And we've got a little shenanigans going on here, Gary. Elvis Osmanovich is gonna have a little chat with Victoria Pickett. Looked like she got her arm wrapped up with Caitlin Cosme. Yeah, little lecture, little warning. Don't do it again, otherwise the book will come out. <laughs> the Hollywood face tells you a lot. Let's have a look and see. Who was at fault? Just a bit of, what? ooh, was there a swing of the hand there? Because yeah. if there was, then that is at least a yellow card to Victoria Pickett. If she did swing her arm, which it looked like from that little bit we saw, that would be at least a yellow card. So she needs to be very, very careful. And no wonder she got a lecture from the referee. I agree completely. And in fact, in fact, as we mention it, it's gone to VAR possibly for that reason that if you swing an arm back not only is it a a foul it, it's a potential red card so let's see what the referee has to say i'm assuming that's what the hold up is about a long discussion the referee with the var team of course juan carlos fighting for his player victoria pickett and I think you saw the, uh, the uh, there's the elbow thing. I think they're going to say it was just uh, pushing a player away, but it was enough for VAR to have a little bit of a closer look at. What they call a common foul in basketball is. Another foul there. That's Mandy Freeman moving forward. Marta having a quick word with Seb Hines. Marta looks good. Seb Hines said she took a hit, a knock in Portland. That 4-0 defeat took off the next week. And I know everybody in Orlando is happy to see the GOAT back on the field. Oh, absolutely. Incredible player. And, and she's used to being targeted. She's used, used to being bumped around by players. And that's why she knocks one-time balls probably more often than most, because you don't want to hold on to it. It's just tempting people to come in and tackle you. Smartest thing you can do is learn how to play one-two touch, stay healthy. Marta, six-time FIFA Women's Player of the Year. 
just incredible. Going for her sixth World Cup, Gary, this summer. I think this is a hundredth appearance, regular appearance with the NWSL today. So if it is, congratulations, and there's Martha. A, there's a service in. Just Lynn Williams just throwing off her defender. They've got, they've got, so there's Marta again. I mean, a fantastic player in every sense. I mean, to be nominated that many times for the FIFA Player of the Year we, award. We, we don't have enough time to look at Marta's <laughs> resume, people. I mean, we're just, I'm so glad she's really taken her role on, she said, as to, to lead by example, Seb Hines. And Marta will do all the little things still at 37 years of age. Abby Smith also played with the Portland Thorns, the goalkeeper last year, along with Yasmeen Ryan and WSL champions, Gary. Yeah, some quality of players on this pitch. But at the end of the day, when only six teams get to the playoffs, it's a real pressure to get points on the board for both these sides. And that's why, you know, you can talk about building for the future and planning to bring players back but you've got to pick up points while you can and for Orlando Pride two games zero points at least for Gotham they've got three points in the bag we talked earlier uh, when conceding a goal first Orlando has lost both games here comes Messiah Bright here comes a dribble run into the box she cuts back to her right side and then her left oh Messiah Bright almost Gary here comes Marta to her right side oh Marta blocked Wow, what a run from Messiah Bright. Just one toe poke short of scoring. I know, right? It looks very much like last week and Kelly O'Hara stuffing Marta. And another by what a what a game so far. That looks like well, it certainly is a corner kick. Wow, the crowd absolutely loving it. I mean it's been you're right, both sides have been great in the table. Look, she cuts in here, there's a chance to shoot, there's a chance to shoot there, there's a chance to shoot there, and she just gets the ball cleared off her toe. It took three defenders, ultimately, to take that ball off Messiah Bright. Corner kick for the Pride yet. Messiah Bright, very deceptive. What you need to be when you're a star striker. Here comes Adriana. For the Pride. And they're going short corner. Tim Rack back to Adriana in the box. Marta. Not sure. It didn't look like she was shooting there. It looked like she might have been trying to pass that ball. Either that or control it. She went down as if to indicate she might have taken a bump, but then realized she wasn't going to get a penalty and got straight back up. But again, a good spell for Orlando Pride. Abello, left footer. Oh, it's a, it's a good strike by Carrie Abello, but a good save by Abby Smith. The, Orla the Orlando Pride returned to action on Wednesday, April 19th, here at Exploria Stadium, as they face the North Carolina Courage at seven o'clock in the opening game of the UKG NWSL Challenge Cup. For tickets, go to orlando-pride.com slash tickets and almost another good touch by Ify Anamanu. It's a dangerous ball in the box. There's two options there for Gotham. Eventually it goes through to Anamanu. She's just stretching at the end, so there's no pace and that doesn't bother Kaylee Collins too much, but it's a quality ball in. It asks questions of defenders and it gives Gotham a little outside chance of getting something in the back of the net. Boy, we've seen, there's been a tremendous amount of action in this game tonight, both sides. Here comes Christy Mewis to Lynn Williams, and a shot by Williams trying to catch Haley Collins off her line. No, wide right, goal kick, Orlando Pride. It could easily be 1-1, even 2-2 at this <laughs> stage. That's the chances that have been created. 
really is exciting football from both sides, both trying to get on the front foot, both trying to be proactive. And we've seen Messiah Bright, we've seen Adriana and Marta just absolutely wonderful on the one side of attack, and Ify on Amanu and Lynn Williams creating havoc on the other side. Coming into this match, Gotham was seventh, Orlando at 0-2. They, were, they are in last place. Each team looking to better their position on the table. I think it's important for, for both sides to get more wins under their belt, obviously for the points, but also their form carrying over from last season. And you do remember your games from last season. You do carry them with you. Uh, for, for Orlando, it's just one point from the last eight games that they've played and mm. got them just one point from the last 15 or one win rather from the last 15 against Angel City. So if players who've been through that sort of tough spell, you want to get a couple of wins under your belt and really start to feel confident in your fellow player around you. And, and that's why, again, a win for either side is, is just oh, it's worth so much here today. Yeah, Gotham, you know, got that really good win in Angel City, coming back down 1-0, and then they ended up winning that 2-1, and then they lost to O.L. Reign 2-0 at home. You know what's interesting about this, this particular series is last year, each team both won on the road. Yeah, and that match, by the way, against O.L. Reign at home, Gotham didn't have a shot on target which is it's crazy to think of the wonderful players up front they have that they couldn't do that. Maybe it just shows you how good O.L. Reign on. Anamanu out wide, trying to cut in, stolen away by the Pride defense and a giveaway by Marta there. When we talked to Messiah Bright this week, Gary, we asked her who were some of her, you know, people she looked up to growing up, and she said Abby Wambach, and who else? Marta. Here comes Lynn <laughs> Williams, number 10. Lynn Williams, the other number 10 on this pitch. It is one of the most wonderful things as a young player when you go from idolizing your heroes when you're 15, 16, and a few years later, you're playing alongside them. It does take a little while to sort of get used to it all, but. The Messiah Bride, it is, it is all coming together so in such an exciting fashion. And there's a shot, and oh, just wide left by Bright. My goodness, oh, she wants that one back badly. There's Adriana once again, Gary, creating problems. Brilliant from Adriana. Stunning, stunning, stunning player down that right-hand side, but Messiah Bride. Is she offside? Let's have a look when the ball is played. I think Adriana will be onside there. It's touch and go. Let's have a look. Hard to tell. But certainly, let's, let's see if this ball is played back or not. It's played back, so it can only have been Adriana who was onside, uh, offside. rather. It was very close. I think fans at home might have something to say about that, especially Orlando Pride fans. But here we go. We're 31 minutes in, Gary. Abby Smith plays that ball out for Gotham. Your thoughts so far? Oh, first thought is Messiah Bright is oh so relieved that it was called for offside because <laughs> yes. that was a tap in from three, four yards out and she would have felt terrible if, if that was, if it wasn't given offside and that was a chance missed. But Adriana done the right hand side, brilliant for the home side and that's something that, that uh, Juan Carlos Amaros will have to get sorted at half time. And I think for, for Gotham, they've, they've dominated a fair portion of this match. They've been in control. They've put some really good balls in the box. They've asked a lot of questions. And they certainly feel that, that they could have been on the scoreboard. So, so both teams with positives to point to. And as I say, it could be 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, unfortunately. With no goals in the game, but hell, it has been exciting. Playing the ball in the middle of the park at this point. Gotham, Christy Mewis. There's a long ball, and it still goes to Ify Anamanu. She takes 1v1 in the box. She's in, and across right to Kaylee Collins. You know, when you get on that end line, Gary, how hard is it to not do that? 
It is very difficult because she's under pressure, but I thought she had a chance now to hit it. And she takes the second touch and that allows the second defender to close her down and make it difficult. So I think you saw her afterwards sort of slap her hands together as if, hell, I got that wrong. Because your first chance is often your best chance to get a ball into the box. There's Marta taking a dive, Victoria Pickett, physical. Mewis. They just seem to be physically stronger, Gotham, in midfield. They're winning more of the 50-50s. And Marta a few times now has been dispossessed. I think they're beginning to get a little bit of a stranglehold in that midfield, Gotham. Freeman over to O'Hara. Kelly O'Hara lays it forward. Lynn Williams. Oh, she saw that a mile away. She plays it out left in the box. Oh, I thought that was going to be a shot. She tried to cut that back. Jenna Nyswanger, the Florida State University standout. Here's Messiah Bright. Just a big physical target. Erica Timrak. for the pride and Gotham will have possession and it's Pickett. Just playing possession now, aren't they, Gary? Yeah, they, they, they're stronger, they're controlling it better. When they lose it, they get it back fairly quickly. Bello, just letting that one go as well with the foul. It's, it's just difficult for the pride when you're up against a team with that experience when you've got, I mean, again, Christy Mewis, Ali Long, Victoria Pickett, Yasmin Ryan, and then of course you've got Onomanu and Lynn Williams looking for any through balls, anything that, that could come their way. It takes a lot of hard work from Orlando Pride to, to contain that attack. Christy Mewis over the ball for Gotham. See the shine on her face. It's a warm night in Orlando. Mewis plays the balls in. And a header just over Allie Long. Yasmin Ryan couldn't get onto it. Goal kick. I think Yasmin Ryan thought Allie Long was going to get a touch there. Wasn't quite ready for it to come over her head. But again, balls into dangerous areas, asking questions of defenders. Sepp Hines asking a few questions as well, but he. He's got to be getting a little bit worried now that, that his team are on the back foot a little too often. Not without opportunities, though. We've seen both sides having chances to score, but we are nil-nil, 35 minutes in here at Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Jamie Watson here with Gary Bailey on the call. So glad you're here joining us. Kelly O'Hara. Playing it right back. We weren't quite sure whether she'd be right back or left back. And Jenna Nyswanga has taken the left back role. Sepp Hines, as you mentioned, played centre back. Spent most of his time at clubs like Leeds United in England. Very, very decent level that he played at. And of course played here in the USA at MLS level. Got to be careful, the fouls are, are uh, adding up here for Orlando Pride. I think maybe that's what the referee is just saying. Erica Timrak. Uh, Bellows had a few against her, Timrak a few against her, so eventually the referee will, will give a yellow card for constant infringement. It does make you wonder, doesn't it, Gary, when that yellow card will be coming out of Elvis Osmanovich's shirt pocket. I think it's just a, it's an indication of, of how Gotham are winning that midfield battle on a physical level. It's forcing Orlando Pride to have to foul a little bit late to reach the ball. But while it's nil-nil, obviously, the Pride will feel that they're in with a great shot. Just one ball through to... Messiah Bright or Adriana and they could be in the lead and that's always a threat for Gotham is while I feel they're they're slightly more dominant in the midfield it's the counter attacks where Adriana on that right hand side has been absolutely explosive Mandy Freeman 
for Gotham. Plays the ball forward, Ifyan Amanu. Certainly is a foul in a dangerous area. Number 26, Caitlin Cosme called for that foul. And it's getting awfully chippy mm. out there. I'm not sure for me that it's a foul. If, if she gets in front of the ball, let's have a look at it again. Of course, we always have the benefit of a replay. The referee doesn't. No, I thought the defender was in the right position to get the ball. I don't see the foul there. Listen, I agree. Except oh, you know what the foul is for the one before that. My apologies. Exactly. Yes, yes. Ball in a dangerous area here. And Kelly O'Hara over the ball. Usually O'Hara or Mewis will take this ball. Certainly a dangerous position. 38 minutes in. Gotham hoping to get on the scoreboard here. Just two in the wall. I hope Kaylee Collins has lined that up properly because it does lend itself to a little bit of a bend around the wall into that unoccupied corner of the goal. O'Hara plays it in. You know, the ball to Williams off her head. It didn't work, but I like the creativity, Gary. It's the breakaway they wanted. That ball's a little bit better there for Adriana. She's through. Yes, creativity from set piece is always great. But when there's that many bodies in the box, it's, it's hard to pull it off. It looks great in training, but when there's so many defenders, not easy. I agree. And the offside flag, offside flag does go up on Messiah Bright. The combination between her and Adriana with Marta just behind is, is really beginning to look exciting. At the start of the season, you're wondering where the goal's going to come for, from for Orlando Pride. Marta was injured, Adriana was playing on her own, but suddenly put all three of them together, and there's definite hope. And they are threatening Gotham on the counter-attack. You can make no mistake that Mandy Freeman, Kristen Edmonds, Kelly O'Hara, Nice Wonga, they're all looking over their shoulder, you know, where is Adriana? Where is Messiah Bright? They know they can't take too many risks at the back. Oh, what a terrific, there's Lynn Williams, pass to Mewis. And Mewis does not take the shot. Instead, she passes it. And it is cleared by Orlando. I thought she should have shot that, Gary. You? Yeah, yep, yeah, it's possible. But I thought she felt that there was a good option in the middle of the box as well. That final pass just hasn't quite worked for Gotham yet. They've had a lot of opportunities around the box, a lot of possession. Been through one on one already with Lynn Williams early on in the game. but. It hasn't quite fallen for them yet, but you get the sense that it's going to come. O'Hara, Anamanu, taking their time. 40 minutes in. Oh, a beautiful scene pass to Mewis, and this time she does continue with there's a head ball. Again, Mewis serving up the pass, but gets the header and the save made by Kaylee Collins. Boy, she's getting tested, Kaylee Collins. She has Christy Mewis, maybe a bit a little bit greedy, go yourself. You've got an angle there. She tries to play it back and there's defenders, even that header. You know, the header's on target. Maybe that's the one you square, but the shot, go for it yourself. But she was thinking of teammates and once again, that final pass just isn't quite there. But <laughs> it's very, very close for Gotham. Great ball out wide by Michaela Clough. It's Strom on the left side. Easily cleared by Kelly O'Hara. Kylie Strom can be dangerous down that left side. Marta to Abello. And there's a shot on goal. Beautiful save. Good pace, not quite enough. Yeah, it's not a bad shot. And certainly Abby Smith had to scoot her across goals nice and quickly. But it wasn't really one that you fancy was going to hit the back of the net. Most goalkeepers would, would enjoy that, like a comfortable save, gets you involved. But Alicia's having shots, Kerry Abella. That's what you want to see. Have a dip a goal. Maybe one of them will fly in sooner or later. You can't score if you don't shoot, right? Yeah. So you can't, you can't win a raffle if you don't buy a ticket. <laughs> we could go all night. Yeah. <laughs> Abby Smith plays that ball. Out to the left side. And Haley McCutcheon runs that one down. Woo! I tell you, these two, these two teams 
getting very physical, Gary. Both Seb Hines and Juan Carlos Amaros said, yeah, we're, we're pretty evenly matched. Here comes Lynn Williams. And there's a, a ball inside the box. Once again, Gotham able to normally pick up the loose ball. As I say, that it's the one time <laughs> that Orlando get it, so well done to Orlando. But generally, when the ball's been, been knocked out, it's, it's Gotham who pick up the loose pieces, who then create the next wave of attacks. So important for Orlando Pride to get on the ball now, try and keep possession and move it around the pitch and try and get their front three involved. Well, you think back to that Angel City game, they were in it the whole game, and Seb Hines said it was within our grasp. So they can take a lot of positive from that, Gary. They certainly were, they were on the front foot, they did, they went toe to toe, give them credit there, they had a penalty, uh, Mohouse made a penalty save and you would have thought that got them at least the point, but 99th minute or thereabouts, always a killer when someone scores, it's literally the last, they blew the whistle and immediately they blew the whistle for kickoff, the referee blew again for the end of the game, so, oh, heartbreaking when that happens. And it was from a set piece in the near post corner and again, you know, you get angry with yourself as players and defenders when you concede from a set piece. Kylie Strom with the ball, whistles. Elvis Osmanovic. Is it a hydration break? I, I wasn't aware we were going to have one of those, but it certainly is warm enough, isn't it, here in South Florida? in Orlando, not south, Orlando is central Florida. I'm just curious that it happens to be literally on the stroke of half time. I thought it was a little bit. Okay, we, we're hearing that it's actually a break for Ramadan for the referee, so it's not necessarily a water break. It normally happens, you would think, 30 minutes into the first half. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm for hydration breaks all the time. <laughs> chance for the coaches to have a few words just for the last minute or two before half time. Swan Carlos talking to Gotham. There's Lynn Williams on your left, Christy Mewis on your right, Ifian Amanu, Kelly O'Hara. It's been a great game so far. Gotham clearly the more veteran side. In totality, there's Mandy Freeman and Erica Timrak talking to Elvis. Osmanovic and Erica Timrak recently inducted into the Florida Gator Hall of Line. This is two minutes of added play in Verizon stoppage time. And isn't this when most goals are scored, Gary? Well, if they are scored, it's normally the time the coach hates it and the players hate it because you're always told you're at your most vulnerable just before halftime and just after halftime. Oh, that's a yellow card. And of course, we'd expect to see a yellow card. And there it is. A yellow card given to Yasmeen Ryan. Silly foul. Just to finish my point, and always within five minutes after scoring a goal, you're at your most vulnerable. So coaches tell you. So that's the, the mantra in the locker room all the time. Just be careful before halftime and just after halftime. Kelly O'Hara to Mewis. Mewis with the ball into Lynn Williams. Just a bit in front of her, but Lynn Williams, Gary, has sneaky speed. Maybe not so sneaky, she is quick. Again, that, that final ball was just overhead to pushes Lynn Williams away from the goal. If they can just get that final pass to be weighted properly, then they're gonna create themselves a whole bunch of extra chances for Gotham. Kelly Collins for the Pride, getting the start tonight. Taking her time as we wind down this first 45. It's interesting on that point, Anna Morehouse not on the bench, so we don't know whether she picked up a late injury. Because when we spoke to Coach Seb Hines, he didn't mention any potential change. So it could be an injury at the last moment, it could be an illness in the morning, or it could be simply a case of just have, giving her a rest. So not quite sure the reason. Kaylee Collins, but she won't care. She wants a chance to have a really good game. And with goalkeepers, it's different from outfield players. If you come in and you play really well, coaches are tempted to give you the next game and the next game. And and that's that's the way you can keep that number one jersey for the rest of the season. 
O'Hara. Just over, Lynn Williams thought there was a trail runner on the back side of Gotham, not to be. Gotham, nice swanger. Nice swanger at the 18. Mewis, Mewis into Pickett. Pickett drops it back to O'Hara. O'Hara thread, I'm sorry, Pickett threads it through and there is your final whistle and the score here, 0-0. Zero, zero. Well, it could have been 1-1, one, 2-2 one, two, two, or even more. It's been a really positive and attack-minded game, I'm sure. If a lot of folk hear the score, they'll go, oh, it was probably defensive and tight. Anything but chances. Messiah Bright's had chances on that one end, and Adriana has been creating all sorts of opportunities. Lynn Williams has had a few one-on-one -on -one with the keeper on Amanu as well. So, yeah, I hope the second half is similar, and no doubt the goals will come. And we are going to have a chat with number 23, Ms. Messiah Bright. Hi, Messiah. How are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very well. Listen, talk to us about that first 45. Are you pleased? <laughs> no, I think it could be a little bit better. Um, I feel like it's a bit transitional for us. Uh, I think we just need to settle down and get a rhythm, and then hopefully we can just break them from there. And just a quick question about Adriana. She's been fantastic on that right-hand side, creating opportunities. Uh, are you excited by the ball that she might be able to give you in the second half? Yeah, uh, Adriana has been doing very well on the wing. I think she's very good, creative, 1v1. So we just let her have that opportunity to be herself and then hopefully just be more organized in the back box. That way we can put it away. Thanks, Messiah, for your time. Thank you. And there's Juan Carlos. Let's take it out to a commercial. When we come back, we will have some highlights for you from the first half. It's Orlando Pride 0 and Gotham 0.
And welcome back to Exploria Stadium here on a beautiful Saturday night in Orlando, Florida. Your score is 0-0. Let's take a look at our results from Friday night. Yeah, Portland Thorns up against Houston Dash and Portland incredible at home and they got off to a great start. Sophia Smith setting up Crystal Dunn. He just finds that gap and sticks in the back of the net and you're thinking, well, if it's similar to the match against Pride, it's just going to be Portland goal after goal. But then Maria Sanchez hopping on an error in defense. And look at this finish right in the corner. Just threads the needle. And that was the final score there. And Houston Dash, I mean, that is a fantastic point away at Providence Park. Let's take a look at scores around the NWSL brought to you by CarMax. And Gary just walked through Portland Dash. I'm sorry, Portland Thorns and the Houston Dash. Gary, what are we looking at oh, on the other side? Washington Spirit again. They've got a win and a draw from their first two matches, and here they are, 1-0 up against North Carolina Courage. And Washington, one of those teams that you expected to do a lot better than they did last season, and they are off to a flying start. A couple of games at halftime, obviously ours. Angel City tonight at 10 o'clock. That should be a great game as well. Challenge. We grew up on challenge. Challenge is what got us through and what got us here. If you think we aren't fired up for a challenge, you haven't been watching. And here we are, the Challenge Cup schedule starting on Wednesday, Gary. You know which one I've got my eye on is Wednesday night at 10 o'clock on Paramount Plus, the San Diego Wave Whoa. against the Portland Thorns. How about you? <laughs> I think they're all exciting in their own way, but certainly the Wave at home to the Thorns is a big one. Pride, all Pride fans will be in a home game against North Carolina Courage. They'll be happy with that. Gotham will have a tough match. We've just mentioned Washington Spirit, how well they're playing with a good start to the season. That will be exciting. We saw Dash get a draw away at Portland Thorns. That's a tough one for Kansas City Current. And Angel City up against Oval Rain. That's another classic encounter. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. You're watching the Ally NWSL matchup on CBS.
And welcome back to beautiful nighttime shot of Orlando. It is the Magic City. It is we're going to take a look at our highlights, Gary. Shoot. Oh, so many highlights. It's a bit difficult to get them all in, but this first one here, Lynn Williams putting the pressure there on Caitlin Cosme. Gets turnover ball, gets into the box, slows down, and then the shot really didn't have much in it. Yeah, I thought she could have maybe gone on a bit further. Yeah, she just waves her hand as if, oh, really? I should have done better there. But it was end-to-end -end stuff. Look at the opportunities here. Trying to get a shot in, and eventually the shot comes, and it's a save from Abby Smith. But Adriana just causing constant problems there, and Kerry Abello eventually giving the shot on target. Looking for counter-attack possibilities. Messiah Bright, wonderful pace, gets in there. Could she shoot there? Could she shoot there? Could she shoot there? And then eventually gets it taken off her toes, but still causing so many problems. It took three defenders in the, in the end to stop her from getting through. And such a wonderful talent. And then back down the other side. This is how the match went, but just opportunities and. This is a ball through, just goes over Lynn Williams and Onomano just unable to get much of a, a foot on it. She was at full stretch and just barely got to the ball. But again, balls in dangerous areas. And then back the other end of the park, Marta, such skills, looking for opportunities. And there's a long range shot. This one fairly comfortable for Abby Smith. So yeah, plenty of excitement, but the one thing we're missing is a goal. It's a 1-0, it's a 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm gonna look, I got ahead of myself. It's a nil-nil score here. Come back, you're watching the NWSL on CBS Sports. And welcome back to Exploria Stadium. We are about ready to get underway. Our referee, Elvis Osmanovich. 
about ready to blow the whistle. It will be Gotham's ball. Gotham is in all white. Orlando in the purple. Kelly O'Hara, she's got that intense look on her face as Gotham will try to finish some of their chances from the first half. Gary, what tactical adjustments might Orlando need to make to get a goal? Just got to win more ball in midfield or keep the ball when you get it because you want to spring Messiah Bright, you want to spring Adriana, and you want to spring Barta forward. And to do that, you've got to uh, keep possession. That's what you've got to try and do. And they've got it back anyway. So that's for them as far as Gotham are concerned. We've just got to keep an eye on the width. And already they're in trouble in the width. And here comes Marta. Marta with a step over and a shot. Oh, forces a save. Uh, a push out, forgive me, for a corner kick. Marta, Marta gets a smile with Elvis. That's a good move. And I was just saying the width is where they're dangerous. Marta on one side and Adriana on the other. And it's a good save from Abby Smith because if she knocks it straight out, there's, there's, there's Orlando Pride forwards coming in. So she has to knock it away from goal for a corner. Really good goalkeeping. And it's the golden booted Adriana for Orlando on the corner kick. McCutcheon back to Adriana. Look who's back doing the defensive work. That's number 10, Lynn Williams. She knows, Gary, forwards play defense, don't they? <laughs> Working for the team, everyone's gonna do their bit. And we talked about the first five minutes after half time and concentrating and not giving anything away and that'll be ringing in both teams' ears from the coaches, no doubt. Yasmeen Ryan for Gotham. It's a throw in for the Pride. Adriana triple teamed. She is dangerous. Elvis Asmanovic says no, that is not a foul outside the box. Kaylee Collins up to play it for the Pride. Abby Smith, lovely save again, just to highlight the technical point of that save is to push it away from danger and out for a corner which she does absolutely perfectly and she keeps playing like this and that number one spot might be hers for a long time to come abby smith out of the university of texas at austin 30 clean sheets in college gary that's pretty good yeah she's certainly shown that she's got the ability clean sheet so far here as adriana on the move Adriana serving in, looking far side for Marta. <laughs> well, it might be small, but she came in there with a big thump at the back post. And the referee didn't, didn't blow it up. He's just keeping an eye now to see if there's any body still on the floor or not. Marta maybe getting a little bit of a, a call there from Elvis. Strom versus Iffy. He's asking for a corner, and I think she might get it. I don't know if he's going to go and have a word with Marta, perhaps. Or if, if it's the coach who's, who's, uh, who's going to get a lecture. Seb Hines, nothing seems to phase him, Gary. Very even keeled, and uh, Elvis it, giving Marta a, a, dis, a little chit chat, yes? Yeah, as we thought, it is in fact Marta, yeah, just saying if you can't crash into players <laughs> like that, right. be a little bit careful. But it's been, the ref has had a, a chat, he, he could have brought the card out, and he brought it out on Jasmine Ryan, and that was for an obvious pullback. Other than that, he's, uh, he's let things run. And here comes Nyswanger. Nyswanger plays that ball near post, and... Elvis Osmanovic calls a corner. Not the best of corners, I think she'd be delighted to get that one back, Indeed. Jenna Nyswanger. It was a low driven ball near post. Nyswanger will get another chance for Gotham. These set pieces, Gary, often goals are scored. And conceded as with the Lando Pride in their last match against Angel City in the dying moments. Nice longer to Williams, who gets a shot. Oh, and here's another shot and another block. Terrific defense by the Pride. And a service in by O'Hara. And there's, oh, beautiful save by Kaylee Collins. That one almost, almost caught Collins off her line and sailed over her head. But 
she parries that over the end line. Well, a couple of chances here, weren't there? I mean, this, this ball in is meant, obviously, as a cross, and it just sort of overextends, and goalkeeper has to move really well. But before that, there was a chance. Lynn Williams nearly had a shot. Yasmin Ryan nearly had a shot that got through. Pressure coming from Gotham. And it will be another corner kick for Gotham. Service in. And Tim Rack gets a, a piece of it, but it goes off on Gotham. It will be a goal kick for Orlando. Ally is proud to support this presentation of the National Women's Soccer League. Ally, do it right. Well, I mentioned it the, towards the end of the first half of the goal. Surely has to come. And again, there was a scramble in the box. Two good opportunities for Gotham that got well blocked. Good defending, but you've got to fancy that one of them is going to sneak through eventually at either end because both teams have been so good in attack, so positive. Uh, beautifully played by Kristen Edmonds. We talked to her this week, Gary. She loves playing center. She loves being on that back line for Gotham. Oh, another foul coming. Yeah, no, Kristen Edmonds was great to chat to and was talking about her life and moving here and the, the excitement about this season and, and what she feels this team with so many mature players, which is there's a nice mixture between maturity at Gotham and young players who can run all day long. And she says she feels that bringing all that together is going to bring Gotham success this season. She said, I am I'm so happy to be back home in New Jersey. I'm a proud Jersey girl. And there's a ball played down the wing to Martin. Not quite quick enough to get there. Marta with a captain's armband. I don't ever want her to stop playing, Gary, ever. <laughs> can, can you help me That's, with that? I know, it's the same with Ali Krieger, for example, That's on the right. other side. You know, with oh. these legends, and Ali's announced she's going to retire at the end of the year, you're heartbroken because they brought you so much pleasure and you've enjoyed watching them. But unfortunately, it happens to all of us eventually. Absolutely, we'll all get over it. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy every second of Marta and Allie Krieger when she gets back on the pitch, Gary. There's Michaela Clough, Seb Hines. But just a touch foul from Lynn Williams. Seb Hines says about Michaela Clough, her work ethic is amazing. Just, she is a box-to-box -box midfielder. She, all day long, she wants to watch film. But, you know, when you get to this level, you need to do those things to be the best. Tim Rack out wide to McCutcheon, out of bounds, throw in. I think you also, you also described Michaela Clough. She has, she has an underdog mentality. She's always fighting, always scrapping, always, you know, trying to prove that, that you know, she can do the business. And there's Clough on the ball right now. Michaela wearing the number eight. Plays that ball backwards to Cosme. And here's Madrill. Oh. Turnover, giveaway. Yasmin Ryan, she's ready. Oh, what a beautiful play behind Mewis. She'll shoot with her left foot. And it goes well over the crossbar, Christy Mewis. You know, as a former coach, I would always get a little agitated about those balls flying so high over the crossbar. How do you keep it under the crossbar, Gary? It's got to get your body over it. And, and I think she was leaning a little bit backwards there. But I, I agree with you. It's, it's frustrating because as a goalkeeper, nothing better than the ball goes over the bar. You don't have to do anything. But when it's, when it's at you, you've got to read the ball and it comes off the ground. It can be wet. It can hit a divot. There's all sorts of things that can happen. So, yeah, I'm sure during your coaching time, it was frustrating watching players balloon the ball over the bar. Another little knock there for Ify on Amanu. She's given a few. She's got a few. <laughs> but she's tough. She just gets up and gets on with it. Let's have a look at the coming together here. Yeah, she, she gets the ball first, then gets clobbered. Kylie Strum, a nine-year veteran pro, not, not no stranger to fouling, <laughs> or being fouled, I should say. It's been a physical contest, no doubt, all day. Gotham punches that ball in, Mewis offside.
Terry, what's the importance of playing a ball back and getting the ball out wide? Just to stretch defenders, move them around, try and open up gaps. It's something that Gotham have done reasonably well in this match. Nice longer, who's got good speed. She'll catch up to that ball on the left flank. Nice longer, 1v1, and a service in. Not cleared. Ryan Mewis to pick it. And that will be a corner kick. Yeah, good pressure. We saw just a minute or two ago a mistake by Emily Madrill trying to play the ball out and it got overturned. Yasmin Ryan coming through and nearly creating an opportunity again. There's pressure being applied on the Orlando Pride defense is what's causing the odd error and turnover in possession. Yasmin Ryan on this corner kick as the rain starts to fall. Oh. Get a good look at it there. Gary, I do want you to talk about being a goalkeeper and the ball and the pitch being wet. As that ball is beautifully cleared by Adriana. Takes a knock to the head. Well, this is where you do want to shoot on target because balls cut flying off the turf when it's wet. It can be a real problem for a goalkeeper. Well, well taken there from Kaylee Collins dominating and controlling her box but it's important you get that skip off the turf you want to you know you never know how it's going to quite come off and it's going to always be tricky for a goalkeeper yeah we talked about adriana it looked like she took a maybe a, a knock to the head and yeah and they want to be careful about this as they should adriana taking a knee saying you know what i'm not sure i feel I'm not sure what she feels but we've got a, a new policy gary about the concussion sub. Each team allowed two subs in the case of a concussion. And I, I love this because we don't need players out there playing unsafely with a concussion. Oh, agreed 100%. The safety of the players has got to be paramount. And if one team uses a, con a concussion sub, by automatically the other team gets to use any sub they want. So it, they make sure that it's fair on both sides. but. And I think referees do a good job, and clearly Elvis Osmanovic is doing that. You don't take any risks. As soon as they're using the pizza boxes as an umbrella, <laughs> you do what you got to do. At least it's warm there in Orlando. I love it. Creative fans. I used to love playing in the rain. I felt like I could run farther and longer, the moisture in your lungs. Well, having played in Manchester for 10 years, trust me, it rains there every day anyway. So I don't think I've ever, hardly ever had a week go by that doesn't rain. So you get, you get used to it in Britain, uh, and especially in Manchester. But yeah, it does. It's, it's nice for the outfield players because it cools you down and the ball skips off the turf. So in some senses, the ball moves a lot more quickly when you're passing it. True. Uh, but for goalkeepers, it becomes a lot more dangerous. And not just with the shots, but the ball's over the top. You have to read the through ball. And you come rushing out before you know that ball skips off it can easily go over your head or you can misjudge it so it does create a lot more problems for the keepers as a goalkeeper you have to realize the ball's coming faster not like in the first half when there was no rain so you have to judge for that as well you can see the player's jersey between the sweat and the rain looks like we are going to see a sub here perhaps for adriana And Adriana, she does re-enter. Happy to see that, Gary. She's been a big problem for the Gotham back line. Here comes Marta, someone else who's been a problem. She dribble runs at Mandy Freeman, and Kelly O'Hara says, hold on. That's great. Great tracking back there from O'Hara to make sure that she can help Mandy Freeman. Does a really good job there, Marta. Without anybody near her, there's no support that she could turn to. Ball out wide, Strom service in. Good job for Orlando to creating problems. It will be a corner kick for the Pride as Adriana trots over there to take it. We get a good look at Sinead Farrelly for the Gotham. Farrelly had her time for Ireland against the US midweek. Now we get to see her playing for Gotham.
Ball bouncing around in the box. Allie Long trying to clear it. Toe poked out by the Pride. It will be a throw in for Gotham. And Gotham will be subbing. Sinead Farrelly will be coming in for Victoria Pickett. Sinead Farrelly playing for Ireland this past week. All but guaranteed a spot on that team. And Marta will be coming out for Via Corta. Seb Hines said he was going to manage Marta's minutes. It's a long season. She just had a knock in Portland. I would say this was a great show by Marta for the time that she was in there, Gary, the first 60 minutes. Yeah, she looked sharp, she looked dangerous, and the combination with Messiah Bright and Adriana is it's going to bear a lot of fruit this season, you would think. Such a talented front three. And you have to start bringing on fresh legs anyway at this stage of the, of the, of the game because players are tiring out and they put a lot of effort and a lot of running and fresh legs can make a big difference. Farrelly plays that ball out wide to Ify, Anamanu. Strom on the defense for the pride. Anamanu gives it up to O'Hara. It's a bad ball to Mewis. And ball played out by the pride, knocked back in by Gotham. Ali Long to Nyswanger, doing a really terrific job on that left back. Obviously a, a striker at Florida State. There's Ali Long, who has 34 career goals in the NWSL. Messiah Bright, this looks familiar. Bright splitting the defenders. This time knocked off the ball by Freeman. And there's another shot by Abello. A little ambitious, don't you think? Yeah, just came off the side of her foot and went well wide. But again, Bright, when she gets the ball, you can see that the, the two white shirts, they're both realizing they have to they have to help. A third one's coming back as well to support because she's such a threat. Sinead Farrelly being the third player coming back. And they know the danger that she poses along with Adriana. And that's why they try and at least get two defenders onto Messiah Bright whenever she's running at them. Gary, what does she what kind of experience does she need to be better at that situation? Messiah Bright. Uh, time. Time and uh, just practice and know what to do, how to get between them. She's got all the tools that she needs in terms of being strong and quick and good finisher. She just needs more opportunity to practice in those situations. Kristen, Kristen Edmonds. And we see this a lot in, you know, heat. Hopefully the rain is cooling players off. Kelly O'Hara coming off to the side. That looks like a captain's armband to me. Allie Krieger usually wears that armband, but Allie Krieger has been a little bit a lower leg injury since Angel City, and we hope she comes back soon. Absolutely. The, the players are just getting a quick mention from the coaches. By the way, Sinead Farley just set a sort of a record because she's made her first NWSL appearance since September the 4th, 2015. That sets a league record for a gap between appearances of seven years and seven months. Wow. It's incredible. I asked uh, Juan Carlos to describe Sinead in one word, and he just said quality, and I couldn't agree more. These two teams, Gary, did you know, in the 19 games that they played each other are seven, five, and seven. So they each have seven wins. This game, are we headed towards uh, another draw? <laughs> it's very, very possible. It's also possible that one of these sides is going to score because they've created enough chances. Interestingly enough, Gotham are unbeaten in their last five visits to Orlando, four wins and a draw. So if you're looking at horses for courses <laughs> and you're interested in stats and data, then you've got to think all, uh, that Gotham are the more likely side, according to these stats, to, to get the breakthrough. Yeah, plus we discussed that both teams won on the road last year. So Orlando won at Gotham, and Gotham won here. So we'll see. It has yet to be determined. Orlando plays the ball back to Kaylee Collins. Who, oh, oh, that's a problem. Kaylee Collins, Lynn Williams, will she take a shot at the goal? Oh, it's a beautiful block. Oh, unbelievable. 
unbelievable Cosme with the block by Orlando. And Ify Anamawa toe tapping, toe tapping that end line. Played out. Oh, we see some of the strength there. Strength on strength, Freeman against Messiah Bright. Well, there were two chances to score there when Lynn Williams plays it across. Yasmin Ryan has a crack at it. Sinead Farrelly has a go. They've had so many chances, Gotham, and yes, good defending from Orlando Pride, but they just haven't had that, that luck that you need to just find the gap. And that was a good example. Lynn Williams once again creating all sorts of problems, getting turnover ball, and just unable to find a gap through this Orlando Pride defense. You know, there, there has to be that execution, Gary, the finish in the final third. Every team deals with it except for Sophia Smith. <laughs> Four goals and two assists. The most points by week three in the NWSL, in the history of the NWSL. Sophia Smith, friends, are, she, what a season she's having, Gary. Absolutely, brilliant player, stunning player. But then so too is Lynn Williams. And interesting enough though, she's never scored in five career regular season matches at Orlando. And it's the only current NWSL team that she's visited more than once without ever scoring. And tonight she's been through one-on-one. -on -one. She's won turnover ball in the box. She's had, she's either had a chance to score or, or and had an assist and just hasn't worked for her as yet. It might still change. And talking of that, let's just go back and have a look at Lynn Williams. Takes it off the toes of, of Kaylee Collins. Head up. She's looking for options. She sees Yasmin Ryan in the uh, sorry Farrelly in the box. Yasmin Ryan then follows up. I mean, so unlucky. Farrelly is in a great position there, and it's just a fantastic block, I think, from Caitlin Cosme. So once again, good defending. But how many chances do Gotham need before they're going to find the back of the net? Couldn't agree more. Very unselfish of Williams to pass that ball. I really thought she was going to go for goal with Collins out, but unselfish Mewis unable to knock that accurately into a corner and Cosme makes the block. Edmonds with the ball. Out wide to Ryan. Why, Ryan, head up. Service. It's a little too far for yep. Iffy. Farrelly had made a, a middle of the box run and that ball was sent to the, the far post. We were. Get our first look. The Gotham substitution, Ellie Jean and Mitch Purse. We were wondering about Midge Purse. She will come on. Kristen Edmonds is going to come off for Ellie Jean. Yep, there's Kristen Edmonds. She's going to catch it. I think they might be concerned about that calf, but anyway, she's going to get a break. And Midge comes on for Ify on Amano. Well, we don't get the front three that I wanted because I wanted to see Ify alongside Mitch Purse, but nonetheless, uh, Mitch Purse, such a wonderful player. Really, really top, top class, and she comes on with fresh legs, so let's see if she can make a, a big impact on this match. Well, that's a great point. 22 career goals for Mitch Purse. We talked about the 230 total for this Gotham side. You just you have to wonder if they're going to be able to get one in this last 20 minutes. Mitch Purse got a goal and an assist in that opening win over Angel City. So it's not just a finisher, she's, she's a creator of chances as well. And that might just be the gap that Lynn Williams needs. Someone's to set her up so she, she can get these goals against Orlando Pride that she hasn't been able to do in five regular matches here. They have a Orlando. ton of, yeah, they have a ton of chemistry, Gary. I agree, Purse and Williams, watch out. Gary, Lynn Williams has 58 goals. Guess who is next? Christine Sinclair has 59. And then guess who's number one? You tell me. 
Sam Kerr oh, with wow. 77 in 119 games, which is exactly what Lynn Williams is playing tonight. I miss the Sam Kerr era, but wow, what a player. Beautiful cross cleared by Orlando very well on the head. Tim Rack causing trouble. Nice swanger. Plays the ball out to Ryan. McCutcheon on her. And that will be, ah, no, they say, <laughs> she doesn't agree, but that is a goal kick called by Osmanovic. Gotham FC will return home to face the Washington Spirit on Wednesday, April 19th at 7.30 in the opening game of the UKG NWSL Challenge Cup. For tickets, go to gothamfc.com slash tickets. We're at the 70th minute mark as Kaylee Collins plays that ball out for the pride. That's going to be a tough match against Washington Spirit. Currently 2-1 up away at North Carolina Courage coming up to the 70th minute. So uh, Rodman scoring. There's a surprise. And Hatch as well. <laughs> so that's what Gotham, have, Gotham fans have to look forward to on Wednesday night. There's another formidable duo, Hatch and Rodman, oh. without question. I mean, the NWSL is just, I mean, there's so many great players. It's, it's thrilling to watch every single game. It certainly is, but that's what, what makes it so difficult. The top six, you've got 12 teams. That means six teams are not going to make it, and it gets very difficult to figure out who they're going to be because there's so much quality in this league. It was epic last year, Gary. I assume it'll be epic this year. Who makes it, who doesn't? We'll be along for the ride here on CBS Sports. The NWSL does not disappoint. Gotham playing the ball out of the back, out wide. Knocking it around a bit, Gary. Here comes Mewis. Christy Mewis to Lynn Williams. Uh, Williams played that ball out to Sinead Farrelly. Played terrific for Ireland. Got great praise from Coach Vera Paul. So great to see Sinead Farrelly back on the pitch. She's got the energy, and she's going to have to use that energy. Always look to sub players when they come on because they've got more gas in the tank, and they have to impact the game. I think it's one of your jobs as a as a substitute. Is you've got to have an impact. You've got to do the extra running, the extra closing down, because you've had less time on the pitch, obviously. And if anyone can do that, Mitch Purse can, as well as the likes of Farrelly. It's absolutely what. Juan Carlos Amoros is hoping for Gary fresh legs to get to finish, to execute in that final third. Meanwhile, the Orlando Pride playing a direct ball over the top to Haley McCutcheon. Nice swinger does catch up to her with a good speed. Wide right, not gonna get the corner kick. She's trying to suggest that it was a, just came off the defender, but hard to see from this. But one of the rare times they've got good ball over the top for the fullback to get onto. Normally, it's been Adriana down that right-hand side, but McCutcheon finding some gas left in her tank to bomb down there and and look for the opportunity. And it looks like she's now wearing the captain's armband now that Martz has left the pitch. Lynn Williams heading that on to no one. Kaylee Collins plays that out. Number six, Emily Madrill. The 2023 draftee has played every minute for the Pride. Seb Hines has great praise for her. Gotham with the throw. Things are gonna start to heat up here, Gary. We're at the 75th minute. Well, if Seb Hines is true to his word, and I'm sure he will be, then you know one thing's for certain. Orlando Pride will keep pushing for a winner, which means there'll be gaps at the back. Lynn Williams is going to want to get that elusive goal away against the Pride. So I think we're in for a cracking last 15 minutes. Indeed. Lynn Williams could potentially tie Christine Sinclair at 59 goals.
Haven't called Midge Purse's name yet. I imagine they're gonna try to get the ball at her feet quickly. As Abby Smith covers that one up for Gotham. And I'm just assuming that Gotham will also go for a win because, you know, one point away from home is, is normally considered a decent point to get, but this league is a tough league. Oh, turnover ball. Oh, here comes, this is trouble. Adriana on the move. Service and a shot by Clough. Blocked by Freeman. How many times tonight has the defense come up strong on both sides? Mewis steps in. Terrific step in by Christy Mewis to keep that possession. Here comes O'Hara. She'll serve that ball over the top. Almost gets it in and through to Yasmeen Ryan. Saya Bright putting pressure on the ball. I was just making the point there a moment ago that it's such a tight league and such a difficult league that, that do you, if you're one Carlos Amaros, say to the players, you know what, a point will do away from home, we'll take that. I don't think you can. I think you have to think, you know what, there's a chance we can get all three points. We have to try and go for it because, you know, we've got some tough games coming up and we need to grab three points whenever they're available. Adriana, advantage. Here comes Tim Rack, good speed. And she, ball blocked, oh. Here comes another shot by Ovello. And again, over the crossbar. It was over, but it wasn't far off. It was heading towards that top corner. And this is a bit better from Orlando Pride. Bad first touch there, but quick to jump on it. Yeah, frustrating. If it's another foot lower down, that flies right in the top corner. Not far away. You're right. I feel like it's gotten better. And the ball <laughs> keeps getting closer to the crossbar. The crowd are getting into it as well. They can sense that this could be there for the taking for Pride. No doubt the Gotham fans watching are thinking, well, we can still grab a winner with Lynn Williams and Mitch Purse up front. So as you were saying a few minutes ago, this is, this is all going down to the wire and it can swing any number of ways. Still plenty of time. Clough wins that 50-50 ball. Goes out of bounds, throw in Gotham. Nice swanger. Uh, Mandy Freeman with a cramp. It's pretty common early in the season. You're not used to playing the full matches. Plus it probably is quite warm out there and difficult for the players, but again, sort of take your time and let the players get the attention they need. But yeah, crucial last 10 minutes plus and a time for the coaches perhaps just to make a last little tweak or give some, you know, give a little pep talk to one or two players they think can influence the match. You know, we, we talked to Seb Hines, Gary, and he talked about these constant opportunities in front of the goal and missed opportunities what do they need to do to, do they need more numbers forward to actually make one of these opportunities hit the back of the net? I think it's just more about the quality at that given moment. Um, for example, we go to the very beginning of the match, Lynn Williams threw one-on-one, -on -one. we've got to tuck that one away. And, but to be fair as well, there's been some good defending, there's been some lucky defending, they've got bodies just in the right place for both sides. So it's been one of those matches where on a different day it could easily be 1-1, 2-2. I think it's a comment we've made a few times. It sits at nil-nil, not through lack of chances, but they just haven't, just haven't got the breaks, the strikers. But as we saw for Gotham, and as we've seen for Orlando Pride in their last match against Angel City, matches can, uh, goals can come late in this game, so. Oh, I'm fully expecting that, Gary, <laughs> right, truly. <laughs> It is after dark, I believe, and you know what they say about the NWSL after dark. Chaos! But this has been a very, very good game, entertaining both ways, and they both want the three points, obviously, Gary. Absolutely, and it's good to see that they're both going for it. And here's Purse, fresh legs, Mitch Purse cranks one, and Collins has to tip it over the bar. Gary, why doesn't a goalkeeper try to make that save? Is it the rain? Is it is it because it's wet? 
Also because it might have just been a little bit too high for her to get two hands on. You don't want to try and catch with one hand. You've got to get two hands comfortably on the ball. This is Mitch Purser. This is her at her finest. Such a good player. If she gets that wide of Kaylee Collins, a foot either side, that could really have been a problem for the goalkeeper. But now they've got the corner. Corner kick. And that ball was going in, Gary, unlike a bellows that's over there. That ball was under the bar. And here comes Yasmeen Ryan for Gotham. Ten minutes to go. Great service. Nobody on the other end on the far post. Always, always amazed by corners where there's nobody at the far post. Surely you put at least one player near post, one far post, one in the middle, and the rest can go where they want. That way you have everything covered. In this case, though, no Gotham player at the far post, and a good set-piece opportunity goes a begging. It's Kaylee Collins taking her time. Under 10 to go, plus stoppage time here. Orlando zero and the Pride zero. I'm sorry, and Gotham zero. A uh, beautiful little touch by Purse. She's just getting getting started, Gary. Heat it up, Mitch Purse. Mitch Purse. Allie Long playing the ball wide. There's O'Hara. Spreading out the defense. Lynn Williams. With the throw. Sinead Farrelly gets that call. Gotham ball. O'Hara to Farrelly to Williams. Beautiful triangle touches. A uh, beautiful spin from Farrelly. Gary, she is so talented. Farrelly, service in by O'Hara. Oh, Mewis takes a, wait, a bump. Save. Just, just wouldn't fall for any of those players in white, would it? Just wondered if Lynn Williams' header could have found another player if she could have knocked it back. But again, there's opportunities in the box. The ball is getting there for both sides. Oh, goodness, what a beautiful battle. Adriana just creates so much problems, so many problems. Oh! Uh, that's a big hit. Sinead Farrelly might be carded for that. And might not just be a card as well. I'm hoping it's just a yellow, but I'm just wondering if Vara having a look at this, that was a late tackle and a harsh tackle there from Sinead Farrelly. And the bellows down, and all the time she's down, I'm sure Vara having a much closer look. Let's have a look. If there's any arms raised, then there's a problem. If it's just, you know, it's just a shoulder, it might, might not be enough for a red, but it is a very, very late tackle, though. It is, and it hits her right in the ribs. She grabs them immediately, and a yellow card was given to Sinead Farrelly there. And Carrie Abello in some pain, and in comes number seven, McCall Zerboni for Mandy Freeman. And it looks like Kelly O'Hara's Harris coming off as well. Yep, Kelly O'Hara, who did play several minutes for internationally for the US this past week in Austin and St. Louis. Get a good look at Midge Purse there. Yeah, 46 minutes for Kelly O'Hara in the international midweek. A little bit of tinkering done with just a few minutes left. Both coaches hoping that their advice to their players and the, the changes might just create that one chance that does hit the back of the net. Look, Juan Carlos is bringing out the whiteboard, Gary. <laughs> constantly, uh, yeah. constantly teaching, yes? Yeah. You'd have thought the tactics would have all have been done and dusted before the match, but maybe he sees something that they can, they can focus on for the last five minutes or so. 
Seb Hines was praising his team after you know the first few games, saying it, well, it's not for lack of effort. This team plays very hard, and we can see that tonight. Just all out effort. It hasn't transcribed into goals, but they are going toe to toe with the Goth with Gotham. Oh, they absolutely are, and it's it's wonderful to see the positivity. But, you know, there was a, there has been a time in soccer in the past where teams have sat back and defended, and oh, that's a lovely moment. <laughs> Singing the songs. Not so sure the little fella above is uh, aware of the songs, but he's trying to use the hand signals. There you go. We have all all ages of fans, don't we, in the NWSL? We love it. Everybody is welcome. As we draw down here, five minutes and stoppage time to go here. Orlando knocking the ball around in the back. It's these moments, Gary, where you've got a young squad and you, you really, you know, you're hoping that they can put it together for the pride. Do you think they would settle for a point here? I don't think either side wants to settle, but at the end of the day, it'll be the first point for the Pride, so they'll feel they've got something, and it'll be a waypoint for Gotham, so they'll probably be reasonably happy. Here comes Purse. You just get the feeling she's ready to crank it. Farrelly in the box. Farrelly with the cross. Far post again. Just not finding Mewis. Mewis had made a great run. If that ball's a little bit lower, that hits the back of the net, the header for Mewis. And again, talking about the quality of the final ball there. It's not the most difficult ball to knock in, but it's just over hit. And uh, you know, if you get a little bit of quality, the right quality, that would have been a header in the back of the net. So no doubt when they sit and watch the, the video of the game and they go through it, Juan Carlos Amaros will be saying time and time again, the chances we had, the final ball we didn't get, and probably Seb Hines likewise will also point to a few situations. I remember the one from the first half where Adriana had Marta free in the box and it was a straightforward pass and she overhit it. So both sides will look to opportunities where a little bit more sort of quality on the ball would have made a massive difference. No, I agree. It's Madrill against Lynn Williams who wins that ball back. Farrelly plays that ball out wide. Gotham on the attack here. a little too far in front. Of Smith. Taylor Smith. He's got four career goals. Fresh legs for Gotham. Taylor Smith trying to make an impact on that right-hand side. It will be a Gotham throw. Smith plays it in to Williams. Oh, he's got Elvis is going to give that foul to Christy Mewis in a dangerous area. It's about 20 yards out, and that will be on Via Corta. It's a good position for a free kick. Sort of free kick you don't want to give away unnecessarily, and was a coming together of feet more than anything else. But uh, by the way, just to confirm, Taylor Smith and Zaboni on Mandy Freeman and Kelly O'Hara off. It's a lot of changes all coming in in a short period of time there. There's the uh, goalkeeper, Kaylee Collins, just lining things up. Mewis lining it up with McCall Z Zerboni right next to her. The pride wall, and there's a shot, a low driven shot. Zerboni plays it out wide. Look for another service in from Smith. Smith turns the ball over. We're in the 89th minute, Gary, plus stoppage time. I think there's probably a few jittery Pride fans who are thinking back to that last match against Angel City and saying, please, not again, not another late goal. They at least have one point, their very first point of the season, and you can build on that, but they don't want to have another loss. That'll be their third in a row.
looks like there will be three subs for Orlando and nine added minutes of stoppage time. I haven't seen that much. Wow. Michaela Clough on the way, off the pitch. And Summer Yates will come in for her. Summer Yates is also a first year a rook out of Washington. A good forward. Knows how to put the ball in the back of the net. Number 19, that looks like Jordan Listro from Toronto, Ontario, in Canada. Here we go. 90th minute, and there is nine minutes, as we said, of added play in the Verizon stoppage time. Here comes Purse. Taylor Smith. And it looks like it's gonna be a corner kick. The ball's in and it's a service directly into the arms, the waiting arms of Kelly Collins, who's had a really good night so far. A clean sheet, obviously, for both keepers. Well, both keepers battling for that number one position in their respective teams, and certainly a clean sheet will go down well with both managers, and who knows, maybe they keep that slot. As mentioned, as when it comes to goalkeeping, you put in decent performance, you keep a clean sheet, there's not much reason to take you out after that. Oh, it's a beautiful ball over the top for Williams. She will get to it. She'll play it back. I thought she was gonna play it to Purse. That was, it did not go over the end line. That will be a corner kick. Lynn Williams, the savvy veteran, drawing a corner kick in stoppage time. You take a look at Collins and Emily Madrill. Ken Orlando, once again, Gary, stop this ball, clear it. Service is in. Oh, and there's a shot. Calling for a handball. That They're looking. They want a handball on Orlando. I did not see it, but that was clearly a handball on Gotham. Yeah, Christy Muir is making the point that, that there was a handball first before the one against Gotham. And she's, she's, asking, for, she's asking for a discussion about it and to see if VAR are involved. And let's wait and see if the referee is going to be in discussion, which it looks like he is. If it's an arm tucked in, then and it's not a penalty. But I think that's what Elvis Asmanovic is saying. But once again, it's it's as as with the goal that was conceded in the last match against Angel City in the dying moment. It's a ball knocked, a corner knocked in at the near post, not cleared properly, and then there's a bit of chaos after that. So I remember that, and I watched Pro Referees has a video of what VAR does, and it's it's amazing if you get a chance to look at it. Um, if you for handball, you cannot, you, it has to be a natural fall, and that means the hand has to be under the shoulder. In this case, in the Angel City fall, that was not the case. The fall must be natural. If it's unnatural, the hand is in an unnatural position. In other words, if the wrist is away, not under the shoulder, it's going to be a handball and a penalty kick. Seb Hines looking very frustrated, and we just said a minute ago that all the Orlando fans are saying, please, not again. Well, Sit tight, because obviously there's a lot of discussion. I never saw clearly just whose hand it hit and how. We've not had a replay of it, Gary, and I honestly, I did not see it. I saw the second handball. Juan Carlos Amaros is pushing for it, obviously, but I don't think anybody saw it clearly. It's difficult for the referee to see it clearly. Only people who can make a, a proper judgment are the, are the VAR team. So. You know, managers tend to shout and harangue the officials, but they've got no better view than you or I, and I don't know what happened. So at this moment, they're either going to recommend he go take a look at it himself or no foul, yeah. and they move on, correct? They, they stick with his decision that it's not a, it wasn't an initial handball, or they'll call him to have a look. But it's taking a while, so clearly there's something, and the longer it takes, the more worried you guess Orlando Pride get because... If there wasn't much on it, then VAR wouldn't. Oh, here's have a look. Okay, so ball comes in. Let's have a look here. Ooh, if that hits the. Ooh. 
Oh. That looks like it's a penalty because oh, the arms, to, the yeah. arms away from the body. The arm away from yeah. the body, and it's Cosme who did, who was the same player who blocked the goal and saved a goal for Orlando. Oh dear, Orlando Pride. Too much. They can see the faces of the defenders, and that you can see they're worried that the Lightning's going to strike twice. Mind you, they actually had a penalty against him in the dying moments against Angel City, saved it, and then conceded in the twin in the 99th right, the minute. So, header, yes. so maybe Kaylee Collins can come up with a, a save from a penalty if there is a penalty, or of course, which you. Morehouse okay. did. The ex goalkeeper, Manchester United, what are you thinking in a possible penalty situation? What do you think she's thinking at this point if it's going to be a penalty kick? Well, she's firstly obviously hoping it's not because she wants to get the <laughs> point. But if it's given against you and it's not your fault as a goalkeeper, then it's always going to go over. Look, this is going to be a penalty. And then um, Kaylee Cousins think? will think, I've got a chance to be a hero. I'm, I'm, you know, it's going to be a penalty. Well, almost certainly they wouldn't have I called, love that. called him across without it. And from our point of view, it looked at. So a chance for Kaylee Collins to, to, you know, to be the hero of the day. But let's wait and see the final comment from Mr. Elvis Osmanovic. Who, um, uh, here we get another look at it, Gary. It's not the angle that gives you the clearest one. There was a one more from the side. I agree. That sees the hand as... Oh, that, this is exactly what VAR is watching, Gary. This angle right here, we're watching what they're watching. But that's the same angle the referee watched during the game because you can see the referee there and he didn't call it. But I think this is there's a different angle where it gets easier to see it. That's a good point. He did not call it. He's looking at it right here and he does it's, not call it. It's hard to see. Now, uh, this is the angle I'm talking about. Have a look there. You can see the arm is clearly away from the body. It stops the ball from going through. And for me, that's a penalty. I agree. It's it's somewhat subjective how far out the arm. But it's do you well, think it's she's well, actually, It's well clear of the body, isn't it? It doesn't matter whether she's trying to stop it or not. It If the arm is away, it's a penalty, correct? Yeah. Uh, the arms are reasonably away from the body. By the way, give, give Ali Long credit for winning the ball, which is exactly what happened in the Angel City match near post. Ali Long does so well. And, and it's not like it's Cosme's fault. There's nothing, I mean, there's hardly anything she can do. It comes off the header, a yard in front of her, a couple of yards in front of her. It's not her fault. The problem is you cannot let the opposition get the near post header because that's when chaos ensues. And it's the second match back to back. This has happened for Orlando Pride. If this is a penalty, guess what Seb Hines will be doing for the next week? He'll be practicing near post corners and saying, no more near post headers. It's hurting us. You know, are you a fan of defenders putting their arms behind their back to defend? It, it's That you can do when you know there's a cross coming in, but, but Cosme doesn't know there's going to be a flick on header. And she hasn't got a, any time to react. But interesting, Elvis has taken a while. Let's have a look. I'm sure it's going to be a pen. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be, hasn't it? And that's so tough for Orlando uh, Pride. Don't you? Your heart just breaks for Orlando. But hey, could be a save here. So let's just call it as we see it. Who takes this PK for Gotham? Is it Purse? Will it be Williams? Wondering what's going on here. There seems like a full on debate from all the players. Are they. Is this, is this being. Okay, I'm a little bit lost now as to what this is. Looks more like a free kick. All the players standing in one spot. It does. It looks like Christian Mios. You know, like um, a possible rebound. You yes, stake everyone's your fighting. Everyone's fighting for that <laughs> spot. And all right. Elvis still having words. Elvis Asmanovic, our referee here, calling for a penalty kick. Unbelievable. Orlando twice in the 90th and in stoppage time. Well, it's, it's the 99th minute now, which was virtually the same time Angel City scored their winners. So talk about lightning striking twice. Indeed. It's going to be Midge Purse. I thought it might be Purse. Clever. Christy Mewis holds it and takes all the pressure and the verbal abuse, and then Midge Purse just steps exactly. up. Exactly. Love it. Heavily taped on the hamstring. Maybe that's what kept her out most of the game. Here she is with a chance to convert the penalty kick. Midge Purse, Kaylee Collins.
waiting for the whistle. And Purse, 100 percent Midge Purse with the goal. Gotham leads 1-0. Good penalty. Pace, a little bit of height, sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, even if she'd have gone the right way, Kaylee Collins. I don't think you're getting anywhere near that. Look at that height, right towards the top corner as well. Fantastic finish, but so sad for Orlando Pride. Second game in a row, 99th minute. What could be and will likely be the winner. Wow, how tough is that for the Pride? Oh, no better coach than Seb Hines to get this team. Because guess what, Gary? Wednesday, back at it. And then again on Saturday, back at it. There's no time. Learn and move on. And guess what? There's still time in this match for Orlando to score. They have to put extra time on, of course, right? Yep. All that time that it took for VAR. I think that's what Juan Carlos Amoros was asking. But if they do get the win here for Gotham at seven points from a possible nine, it's a great start to the season. And that's what they were all suggesting that this squad can produce for Seb Hines there. Three games, three losses. We rooted to the table and it's oh and two of those losses coming in the 99th minute wow that is so tough to take it, it is crushing but he has always said they will learn from this and they will because they got to get right back at it on wednesday and the ukg challenge cup begins orlando are going to get another shot a silly foul by ali long Well, last chance, perhaps, for Orlando Pride just to wing something in the box and see if they can get a knockdown or a header or something themselves. Certainly Gotham got theirs from a, a corner. Why can't Pride do something from a free kick? And a service in the box towards Messiah Bright. Unfortunately, not enough pace on that header to give Abby Smith any kind of problems. Smith just pushing everybody up. As a keeper, you want to get the ball in the other half of the pitch. Get it as far away from your goal as possible. Uh, it's a beautiful high end zone shot. Six new cameras for the NWSL this year, bringing you great pictures tonight. Collins distributes. Good idea to target Messiah Bright. Isn't it amazing that of all the chances that have fallen for both sides, it ends up being a handball and a penalty that actually settles this match? I know. It, it, I feel like it's crazy, but it's a chaos that often happens on those set pieces. What is it? I feel like it's 80% of all goals are scored on set pieces. I know that's too many, but it feels like it. <laughs> yeah, as we mentioned, if you get a near post flick on, and we always used to plan for that at Man United, near post flick ons, because once you get the flick on, as a defender, you don't know where the ball is, it's penalties, you can't stay with your marker, it, it just causes chaos. And twice now they've conceded near, near post flick ons, Orlando Pride, and twice they've paid the price for it. Agreed. I love the near post flick on. Julie Ertz is one of the best at it for the U.S. Women's National Team. All the end of it, so wondering where is Julie Ertz going to play next? As Gotham, Jenna Nyswanger, Williams will go to the corner, try to secure the three points for Gotham. Yep, sensible play, gets the throw in. The fans still believe and still hope for Orlando. But Gotham doing what you need to do, which is they got themselves a corner. Well played there from Lynn Williams. All the experience there coming through for the USA International. God bless those Orlando fans still cheering, still cheering on their team as they should. Such a great environment in so many NWSL stadiums this year. Lynn Williams and Midge Purse, there's the dynamic duo for the Gotham. Well played off of Lynn Williams. Orlando with the throw.
Elvis Osmanovich asking her to move back. Haley McCutcheon. Seems Gary, the road team once again in this last year, both road, you know, Orlando went up to New York and won, and now Gotham. Lynn yeah. Williams. Yeah, we had that stat, Gotham unbeaten in their last five visits to Orlando, four wins and a draw. Well, they're on the verge of making it five wins and a draw. Sometimes just in football and soccer, you know, you get lucky grounds and you get unlucky grounds, lucky opposition, unlucky. For Gotham, this is a lucky city to come and play in Orlando. I agree, credit to Gotham. And when we talked at the top of the broadcast, it's a young, it's a young side. Orlando and they will learn and they will get better and Seb Hines will lead them it's a long season Gary it is but when you've got zero points after three games and you're looking up it's it's a mountain to climb against you know so many fantastic sides in this NWS all oh, good skill I thought for a moment uh, Madrill was going to take her down oh that's not Madrill that's uh, Via Corta Farrelly onto the ball, sliding in. Orlando trying to move that ball forward. Elvis Osmanovich has the time. We're coming up to the 107th minute right now. This has been one of the longest games, I reckon, in NWSL history. It's just, it's for us. We're, we're, rec we're making a record today. Lynn Williams charging onto the ball. That's it, Lynn. Go to goal. Forget the corner. And there's a shot to score! Lynn Williams ties Christine Sinclair. Goal number 59. Gotham 2, Orlando 0. Brilliant finish from Lynn Williams. It's been coming all match. She's had so many chances. And she's tried to create chances for others. But here, it's a tiring defense. She just goes in dives into that box and just bends it around Kaylee Collins. Fantastic finish. Coming into this match, she'd never scored in five career regular season matches at Orlando. Well, in the sixth match, she's finally done it, Lynn Williams. When we asked Juan Carlos Amaros to describe Lynn Williams in one word, he said attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and I would agree with that in the, in the most endearing way Lynn Williams has attitude she just showed it right there I'm not gonna go to the corner watch this touch beautiful first touch to get into the box and then the the calm finish executed score yeah, that's her second goal in three matches so again a lot of people saying that when she joined Gotham to add to if you and Mitch Purse suddenly they were in with a chance of winning trophies well that's why that's what Lynn Williams brings to the Gotham party you know and purse with the penalty kick purse and Williams, watch out, folks, all season long. Gotham came in sitting seventh on the table. I'll have to see. We'll have to show us at the end, which we will. We'll look at the, the standings. But they're going to pick up three points here and move up. And Orlando will continue. Yeah, they've moved up into fourth position, level with San Diego. Still have a match to play later on um, away at O.L. Reign. But yeah, there's six points. Portland Thorns are top with seven. So basically, they're one point behind the top side. That's a great position to be in, nice and early in the season, as mentioned, unfortunately for Lando Pride, they sit with Kansas City current, three matches played, both teams have zero points. Assuming nothing else happens in the 109th and minute. There you go. <laughs> and Gary just called that final whistle, and there it is, your final score. New York, New Jersey, Gotham two. And the Orlando Pride zero. What a, a hard fought match by both sides. It was really decided in the final few minutes. And it's now time for the play of the match brought to you by Ally. Celebrations going on there with the Gotham players. And is it gonna be the penalty that separates the two teams? And yes, this is the moment when it all turned. Then Williams' goal at the end was Obviously, there were gaps as Orlando Pride pushed forward, but that was the moment. And again, nothing against Caitlin Cosby, not much she could do, but penalty it was, tucked away by Mitch Purse. 
And that's what suddenly got Gotham into the lead. Here it is again. Great finish, by the way. <laughs> right up in that top corner. Kaylee Collins going the wrong way anyway, but I don't think she would have been anywhere near it had she have chosen the right side. Mitch Purse to land. <laughs> <laughs> I love the celebration. Got that Michael Jordan number 23 tongue uh. out. And we're, we are going to take a break and wrap things up as we come up. Gotham will get the three points in the victory. Come back with us. Ally is proud to support this presentation of the National Women's Soccer League. Ally, do it right. San Diego. Hello, Midge. I have two people in my ear. Okay. Hi, Midge. It's Jamie Hi. Watson. Hi. It's Jamie Watson Hi. here. Uh, what a hey. tremendous. God bless you and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of him. <laughs> Hi, Midge. Jamie Hi. Watson here. Tremendous game. I want to ask you about that penalty kick. Can you walk us through it, your feelings coming on late and how it felt to walk up to the spot? Yeah, you know, I uh, picked up a knock in training earlier this week, so I was limited in minutes, and I've played <laughs> Kriegs, Krieger, <laughs> Allie. Can I have a moment? <laughs> <laughs> Tell her, Midge. <laughs> um, I picked up a knock in training earlier this week, so I knew I was limited in minutes, but I was happy to just make an impact. And um, I think our coaching staff prepares us for those moments. And, you know, hopefully we don't wait till the end of the game next time and we can dig it out earlier. Midge, Gary Bailey here. Just a final question for you. Um, obviously, you've been playing alongside Ify on and doing a great job, but now you've got Lynn Williams as well. Does that excite you that going forward you have so much great attacking talent? 
Oh, it's been exciting since Lynn came to the team, since I knew what the roster was going to be. I'm, I'm really excited for this year. I still think we are not even close to what the best of Gotham can be. So I think there's a lot of goals to come. Mitch, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy your three points. Thank you. And let's take a look at our highlights, Gary Bailey. Well, it just from the minute that this game kicked off, there were highlights and possibilities, scrambles <laughs> in the goals, shots and chances for both sides. There were chances early on in the match for the likes of Lynn Williams through one on one, and then were chances in the second half as well. This ball from O'Hara just being slightly overhead, but forcing Kaylee Collins to backtrack and tip the ball away from the goal. I mean, it's a match that could easily, we said 1-1-2-2, one, one, two, two. it could have been 3-3-4-4. Three, three, four, four. Lynn Williams doing brilliant here, take the ball off Kaylee Collins' foot, tries to get it back. There's an effort coming in from Sinead Farrier that gets blocked, and then one from Yasmin Ryan that gets blocked. Again, defenders give them credit, they got their bodies in the way so often. Uh, Caitlin Cosme there with that particular block. This one, the, the ball nipped in, and this is the penalty. It hits Cosme, there's nothing she can do because Ali Long did brilliantly there to get the flick on at the near post. And you haven't got time to react if you're a central defender. Uh, Elvis Osmanovic, he goes across and has a good look on the screen, decides, comes back, points to the spot and says, penalty it is. And what was that, the 99th minute for the second game in a row. Orlando Pride conceded a goal in the 99th minute or thereabouts. Nothing Kaylee Collins can do because that is a fantastic finish from Mitch Purse. Great little celebration as well. And then, of course, Orlando Pride throwing everybody forward. And Lynn Williams says, you know what? I haven't scored in five visits to Orlando. <laughs> I'm going to make this the one that counts. And she just bends it in that far corner past Kaylee Collins. Gotham go back with all three points. Orlando Pride for the second week running concede in the dying moments. Let's take a look at our out-of-town scoreboard, Gary. Uh, the as we mentioned Friday night, it was Thorns Dash 1-1. Uh, but you've been filling us in. The Courage came back to win that game over the Spirit 2-1. The Red Stars currently 2-0 over the Current. And then this match 2-0. And of course, tonight we've got two great games. Stay tuned on uh, CBS Sports Network and Paramount Plus. Angel City against Racing Louisville and O.L. Reign at the wow. San Diego Wave. That's going to be a good one. Oh, well, Rain, San Diego Wave. Awesome game. I know. Just mentioning all these names, we're going to take a look at the updated table, the standings, Gary. You you were really quick on the draw there with our, um, you know, three points to Gotham. But look at this. From seventh to now fourth. Uh, but actually tied for second, really, technically. Yeah. Uh, New Jersey Gotham there. And, of course, the Orlando Pride, they stay at the bottom. But it is a long season. And, you know, they are going to figure out a way with the talent of Marta and Adriana and Messiah Bright. Yeah, they certainly will. But for Gotham, six points get you right. A point behind Portland Thorns and Washington Spirit, who I think won the match 2-1 this evening. Uh, San Diego Waves still have to play later on. But, yeah, it is early on, but you want to get a good start. You want to get in the top half. You've got so many top-class teams. I mean, Portland Thorns, uh, San Diego Wave, Washington Spirit. These are all going to be hard teams to catch. So you want to get the points in the bag, which Gotham have done. Let's take a look at the UKG Challenge Cup, which starts Wednesday. Hello, just right around the corner. You know, there's some great games that you can see here on your screen, and the Pride will take on North Carolina Courage. And again, that game, Angel City, OL Reign, that's a terrific one. But then uh, Sophia Smith against Alex Morgan. Wow. The Wave against the Thorns, the two goal scorers superior uh, in this league. And Gary, it's been a terrific, it is a terrific <laughs> evening. Thanks so much. It is Gotham. They take this match 2-0 over Orlando. For my broadcast partner, Gary Bailey, our producer, Tom Pirro, and our amazing crew, I am Jamie Watson saying so long from Orlando, Florida.